Hello there, you're very welcome to episode 17 of the Off The Ball League of Ireland podcast from Off The Ball Towers here in Dublin. Now, over on the way over the next hour or so, we are going to speak to two first division stars, two of the best midfielders in the country. Joining me in the studio in just a second, Longford Town's Sam Verdon and UCD's Greg Sloggett will be here. We're also going to get the very latest on what's going on at Limerick with Don O'Sullivan, who's a sports editor of the Limerick Leader newspaper. Really, really, really sad stuff coming from Limerick at the moment. We wonder are they going to finish the season and they probably now are favourites for relegation. Everybody at Bray will be very uh, happy with developments down there, but for the league it's uh, really, really disappointing. So we're going to hear from Donald Sullivan on that. And we'll be joined by Dundalk, Sean Hoare, who's just signed a new two and a half year contract extension. He'll be at the club until the end of the 2020 season. He'll tell us about playing it right back, uh, trying to be in the team also at centre-back and also uh, life as a scholar with Minute. Uh, that's all on the way. We'll also uh, hear from Graham Burke after his uh, Ireland goal and ask him if he's happy that he uh, robbed the goal from Darrell Lenton as well that's all on the way plus uh, Sean Maguire's contract extension at Preston as well uh, firstly though we welcome Sam and Greg to the studio good afternoon boys how are you? Hey, Jamie. good afternoon Jamie now Sam first of all uh, you were in action up in Finn Harps on uh, the weekend Did another good win for Longford and we're now going to have a look at your goal and uh, said celebrations we'll have a look at that screen there and we'll see you in action for Longford it was 2-2 at the time and uh, Sam gets back in the game So oh, Sam, a hugely important goal uh, to make yeah. it 3-2. Uh, talk us through that celebration, please. Oh, it's a uh, fortnight. It's my little brother's constantly saying to me before every game, Sam, if you score, you have to take the L. It's what they call it. I don't play it. But yeah, he's, he's mad into that game, so that's, what, that's for him. Was he at the game? Uh, yeah, he was. He's, he comes to every game, so yeah. But we, he, was, he was delighted after the game that I took the L, apparently, is what they say. Very nice, and um, on a serious note, really important goal. You guys were two up. Uh, Harps got it back to two two, and it ended four two in the end. But uh, you managed to, to score the header. You've, you've been, you know, one of your strengths is getting in the box and scoring goals. And at that time, it was a crucial one because I think they had just made it two all, hadn't they? Yeah, it was basically we were two 0 up in the, in the first half, and half time came, and then we knew they were going to come out in second half, all guns blazing. They got what we thought was a soft penalty, and then literally straight away again they got a second to make it two all, and then um, yeah. From the tip off, I think we put the ball into the corner. We won a corner and yes, yeah, scored there. So it's great for us to get back into the lead, especially after being two up and then um, going two two. So it gave us a bit more confidence to go in and win win the game. Yeah, and um, you've been used a lot as an attacking midfielder at Longford and also at St Pat's. But you've been having a um, a little cameo a little bit further up the pitch as well. Yeah, no, it's just I think in the last couple of weeks we've probably um, changed our style slightly, and Neil's given me the license to 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 get up up forward more. Which has probably suited us a bit more and uh, it allows us to get the ball up quicker and yeah, no, it's worked for the last two games and we've had two massive wins now over the bank holiday weekend which has really, really shot us back up the table chasing Greg's UCD so uh, no, hopefully all upwards from here. Yeah, 26 uh, points so far, fourth in the table as you said, you're uh, playing away to Cabin Teeley on Friday and all the teams towards the top, if you can put a run of two, three or four wins yeah. together it gives you a really good chance and you'd be hopeful of making it three out of three against Cabo on Friday. Yeah, well, I done an interview earlier in the week, and I, I said we, it, for us, it was staying connected to the to the the top four or five, and because we haven't had a run yet, we've been inconsistent. We've haven't really put a one, put a run of two, three, four wins together. So I feel that if once we stay connected to the, like I said, UCD draw the shells, we will put a run together, find consistency, and I do feel that we can climb up the table. And then obviously, Cabin Teeley on Friday, it's going to be a tough game. We know that going to Stratbrook it's going to be tough but look we're in good form and we'll go there looking to win the game Yeah it's a really fascinating first division and you mentioned there about trying to catch Greg's UCD <coughs> Greg your team top of the table 3-1 uh, win over Cove on Friday and a much welcome win after a couple of defeats recently you were I think 7 ahead at one stage it's now just a point so uh, that was a good win against Cove and you were missing some senior players as well Absolutely um, we definitely had a bit of inconsistency around, around exams during during college, um, finishing up, so it's nice to get back on the back on board with a with a three one win against Cove, and and after I handed to Cove, they they put up a, a good a good performance against us, and and probably deserved the point on the night. Yeah, at the time, at, at this time for UCD players, it's nearly time for summer and you know almost full time football. But for the last couple of weeks, you know we're speaking mainly about education here in a few minutes time, and the leaving cert is starting today and Wednesday. It's a it's a period of of you know lots of stress for players when you're trying to play football, and then also. Do your your exams, whether that be in you know first year, second year, third year, or there could be final year exams as well. Absolutely, it's 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 a crazy time. I know 
uh, George, Georgie Kelly and myself were, were trying to organise an exam. We sat in Galway on, on, on a Friday night in, in May there where um, we both had 6pm six, 6 exams sat, um, set to be sat in, in the RDS and we had to, to organise the exam to be sat down, down in Galway. Now I, I ended up injured myself but Georgie sat down there with, with Macker as his invigilator. So um, yeah, it's definitely a hectic time and, and there's a lot of kind of... Um, Options the club have to give you and time off to, 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 to make allowances for that. Yeah, Sam, I think you had something re- uh, like that recently as well. You had to do an exam in Dublin and then shoot down the road and make it early enough for a kick off on a, on a Saturday or a Friday, was it? Yeah, on a Saturday night. I think we were playing, I think it was actually the previous Cavan Thiele game, had a, an accounting exam on the Saturday, so there was a bit, um, bit of a rush to get to the game, but got there in the end. Greg, is that a, the education side of things and exam time, is that a good distraction from football or does it just add to the stress of it all? I think it's a bit of both. I mean, obviously, things on the pitch can be can be difficult at times in, in their own light, um, and a distraction having something to to keep your mind occupied uh, off the pitch is, is always good. But it, it works the other way as well. You're you're stressed. You're stressed with exams and study and, and assignments, and it's it's relentless. And you have to commit to that. And often, oftentimes, and even during the season, I had to take take a couple of weeks off um, where my head was completely completely melted, and, and I just needed a break from. From commitment on on all fronts, and and I just had to focus on exams because just being final year and and all the pressures involved, uh, I needed a bit of time off. Yeah, obviously I don't want all the details, but just explain to us at that time what you were you were thinking when you were trying to train three or four times a week, get the gym sessions in, and also get in as much study as you could in the build into exams and try and have a life away from you know college and, and football. Yeah, it was a, it was a crazy period, and particularly this year, particularly this year, um, I had a, my final year project, which was which was a big task to to behold and. I know it all I kind of fell on, on a previous game actually against Cabin Teeley as well. Um, on that week, it was a final year presentation and a big report due. And on the Wednesday, I presented and it was overwhelming stress. And I just all built up to the Friday and, and even I went up to the game at half six and, and met the lads before the game. And I just realised then I just couldn't, couldn't build myself up for the game, couldn't motivate myself. It was, it was a hectic time, it was just really stressful and it just overwhelmed me. And I just had to, had to. Take a, take a back seat for, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, that must be really hard to do because all you've known for the last kind of three or four years is to play every Friday night for UCD and you know be one of their main men in the team and, and to have to, to arrive to a match and make you know a very mature decision of I can't do this must have been a hard thing to do and you know given the fact we've just spoken about how competitive the league is as well. Yeah, it was it was really difficult and especially during a time where we were on such a good run and to to pull myself out was was very frustrating because obviously. My last year in UCD, I want to impress. I want to. I want to show other clubs what what I'm about and and what could be on offer potentially um, going forward as a, as a graduate. Um, so yeah, it was a very difficult decision to to make, but just one that needed to be done for my own kind of mental health, if you if you want to put it like that. So you had that break. You're back now. You're back in the team. You're back playing. So the break did what it needed to do for you. It did, yeah. Bar a couple of niggling injuries, I'm back in and 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 playing consistently enough. Yeah, so happy enough. Next game as well, a home to Drada on Friday. They're only a point behind you now. I saw them draw on Talca against Shells over the weekend. I think Bank Holiday Monday the game was on. Your thoughts on uh, on that game? Yeah, it's, a, it's another huge game. As with every other game we we play in this league, as as Sam knows. I mean, we we play Drada and then Finn Harps and Longford the, the, the next two games after that. So, you know, huge games. And you look at the top six of the table, and you could you could reverse the top six in in the order that they are now, and it would be perfectly reasonable reasonable table. Um, so yeah, every game is every game is difficult, and in particular the next game, um, draw at one point behind us, obviously, and and it'll be huge to to open up another gap. Yeah, just holding up a live score here to have a look at the league table. As you said, it's you know a hugely interesting division with, with the way you know things are at the moment. You guys are uh, top on thirty two points, draw a second on thirty one. Shells on 27, Longford now on 26. You got Galway and Harps both on 25. Wouldn't rule Cabin Teedy totally out of it yet on 18. It's, like we spoke last year about the Premier League and about the three teams going down, and we spoke about the 18 First Division and how you know non competitive it was with you know Waterford and Limerick over the last couple of years walking through it. This year it's the opposite. For us neutrals, we love it. What's it like playing in when the games are so 50 50? Yeah, it's intense, and every game is there's so much matter, so much is so much is placed on it. And we we went up to Cabin Teeley. Um, a couple of weeks ago, and and lost lost two nil, and you know you're just dropping points, and it it, it can get frustrating. Um, but you just got to keep on trying to be as consistent as possible, and pick up points where you are, and um, cutting out all any silly mistakes because they all they all just matter. Um, in this league, so tight at the top. So in terms of you, Greg, and, and your college, you've just finished, um, your 
elite year now. I know UCD will almost go full time. Where are you in the education and is the plan to go on to a master's or is it to do some work or go play football elsewhere? What's your plan? Yeah, in a, in a period of uncertainty at the moment a little bit. Um, there's potential to go on and do a master's there. Obviously, I've, I've just graduated from my four-year four year degree in computer science. Um, so there's the option there to go on and do a master's potentially. Um, to be honest, I want to see how the next couple of months unfold and and where things stand come August, September and, and whether I'll go and do a master's or not or or potentially try par- part-time work and, and, and finish out the season with UCD. Yeah, because you know we spoke about how how uh, you know under pressure you were and everybody was for the last number of, of weeks and months. But now that it's uh, June and it's summertime, it's almost trying to be a full time footballer for a couple of months. You know, as a student, which is something that you know you spoke about a period of, of stress during exams. But now is a period of when other teams, Sam for example, is going back to work after chatting to us here. You can you know be full time, be in the gym, train, and I know work on the UCD summer camps as well. But really focus on football for a really crucial eight weeks in the title race. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, just just seeing the back of exams was great, and we have a couple of months now where we can be the the number one focus for for a while. Obviously, um, a lot of the lads will be strapped for cash, uh, typical student life. But um, we'll all have to do our own bit of part time work, and obviously, the summer camps is is a great option for us there in UCD. It's very flexible, and and that's great. But the the, the number one focus is definitely now on on promotion and 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 full time football. Yeah, Sam, just interested to get your kind of story. You. you played for St. Pat's as an underage player, you, you played a number of games in the first team there, including in Europe, You've, uh, you were in IT Blanchardstown, you left that course, you're now playing for Longford and, and you know working almost full-time in your dad's shop and you're also in college, so just uh, give us a background to kind of your period of the last couple of years from you know when you finished with Pat's 19s through being a full-time footballer to now being a part-time footballer in college and also working. Yeah, so when I came out of school I basically went into football full-time and I was doing a course in Blanche IT business and I basically just was never there um, I w- didn't have time to study with training in the mornings and stuff like that I was missing classes so it was just wasn't just wasn't feasible for me to be able to I suppose pass my exams and do the full three years but um, obviously left Pat's last summer and that's when it really hit home that right I need to look elsewhere now and um, need to do something else and I started then in Griffith College in September, so I've just completed my first year there. I have two more years, hopefully, after I pass my exams. But, um, yeah, so two more years there. And then working with my dad as well, he is a printing shop out in Klonski, so it's he's great. It's great that he, he, he knows the this, this situation. He, he um, allows me to leave early for training. He allows me days off when I have games away and stuff like that. So in terms of that, it's, it's brilliant. Um, that flexibility I might not get somewhere somewhere else so he's really helped me out that way and uh, yeah Longford it's great it's it's just great to be playing games consistently and um, yeah we're challenging this year which last season wasn't really the case when I came in second half of the season the league was almost over so like Greg was saying it's really competitive this year so it makes every game mean something and yeah uh, it's great. Yeah, we'll talk more about your work in a minute as well. Just at the time when you were, you know, making that choice between, you know, Pats and college in the mornings and yeah. Longford and college, you know, online sometimes and, and at the evening as well and also the job, what was in your head then, you know, as a person in his early 20s? Just like, obviously I wanted to play football, but I know when I'm in my late 20s and I want to get a mortgage and kids and stuff, um, I need to have something else. And even for after football, like I know, I'm, I'm not naive, I know it's a short career one injury away from probably having to give it up and then if I'm that lucky 33, 34 is when you are going to have to give it up so I know I need something else and I just felt that um, with going evening training this was the right time to do it and like I said I'm still young so um, might as well do it now while I can and I have the time um, so yeah that was really the decision behind it. And now how are you finding the balance of I know it's now summertime, thankfully, you know, similar yeah. enough to Greg in terms of you, you don't have college, but you're also, you also have work and, and you're, I know everybody says, you know, a lot of clubs in the League of Ireland are part-time, but Longford train, you yeah. know, three nights a week, you're in at weekends sometimes and you've got your games as well. Yeah, basically we train the same, same days as I did at Pats, but it's just in the evening, so, um, yeah, it's tough. The first semester in college was fine because it was kind of mostly at the end of the season, so I had the time without football, but second semester I found that a lot tougher juggling between football work and trying to get that study in to pass exams so it's been a lot tougher since since January but um, I've got through and hopefully the exams will be will be okay. 
Yeah, and once the exams are done and you're now being able to focus on, on yeah. football for a bit as well, along with work, will that be a huge weight off your mind? I spoke to Greg about the stress of, of, of full-time college and exams for, for him. Was it similar for you in the time when you were trying to balance the three? Yeah, it was tough. Like We, we had a couple of away games. I think we had Cove on the Saturday away and then we had Cove away again on the Tuesday. So that was tough to be able to get the study in and that was around my times of the exams as well. So that, that was a tough couple of two weeks, but... Um, I got through and I think I've done all right in my exam, so that's, that's important. Now, we always have to give uh, people a shameless plug, so tell us uh, where you work and uh, what the company does and what they're called. Yeah, it's Copy Graphics and Klonski, so um, just basically printing. We print everything, architectural drawings, pull-up banners, everything. So, uh, yeah, if anyone needs anything printed, you know where to come. Yes, indeed they do. And I believe a number of UCD students actually uh, would be up the road there, up to Copy Graphics to get their, their stuff just, done as well. I was just saying to Greg, you better come in to me sometimes, but <laughs> haven't seen them yet. Always time to network. Um, Greg, I wanted to speak a little bit about exams <coughs> in school and it's in a period now where the whole League of Ireland, whether it be 15s, 17s or 19s, maybe even some first team players really doing their junior cert or their leaving cert, you did the same and you're now kind of four years through college. The importance of young players being, you know, being okay in school and trying to do well in exams so that, as Sam said, when you turn 29, 30, you want a mortgage, you want kids, or you turn 34 and you're retiring, you've got something behind you. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously every student needs to needs to focus on their academics, and I know I've, when I was up and coming with UCD back under 19s and just coming up with the first team, and I, I sat my leaving there, and they just told me, you know, go away for four or five weeks and and just focus on that and and get that done because it's it's vital, it's vital to your future, and and you know you need to you need to settle down and then focus on your academics. Um, it's huge, it's huge, um, and I think the the restructuring of the league is is beneficial for that, particularly for. The underages, I know they obviously take a good a good break around this this period um, in the under seventeens and under nineteens, all the way down through. So, so that's obviously uh, beneficial for for the younger lads to to take time off and 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 get their get some good points in their their leaving sir. Yeah, because it gives them the opportunity as well. With so many League of Ireland clubs now having link ups with you know third level institutions, you know in Dublin and also you know in other parts of the country that players can combine you know almost full time football. And college, but if they've got a good leave and certain they can go. And clearly, you know, lots can go into a trade and stuff. But if they do want to do the academic route, which you've been through, it's something that's you know been a really good period of your life. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 good from the FAI really to to have this this league structure in place for for clubs, um, because obviously clubs are, are selfish in some ways and they can be, and and they see a player that's that's up and coming and they're and they're playing well for for the team and. And, and they throw them in and, and they don't want them to go off and, and, and be committed elsewhere. They want them to be completely committed to the club. Um, but this just forces forces that break for, for the younger players to um, to ensure that they, they get their leaving certs at and, 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 and get some good points. Was that always your intention? You know, you played for a really good St. Kevin's team. I think a couple of that team would have went to the UK at 16. Loads more are now playing in the league. But, you know, when you were 15, 16, was always your intention, I'm going to do my leave and I'm going to go to college, I'm going to play for UCD, or was the dream of England something that you also had in your head and if that opportunity came up, would it have given you a real decision to make? I think the dream was always there um, and it would have been a hard decision had that opportunity arisen, um, but it didn't. Um, so maybe a blessing in, in disguise in some ways. Um, but I always had my, my two older brothers went through UCD as well and, and to, to follow in their footsteps was, was, was always great. Sam, for you as well, you've got some younger brothers who also play football in the Underage yeah. League of Ireland and, and, and so on, um, and you've been through the same you know, situation that they're going through now. Just talk us through that as a young player when you're doing well at you know, 15, 16, when there might be interest and you, you, know, you decide or, or the opportunity doesn't arise really and you go, right, well, I'm going to do my leaving cert, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to do FOSS, I'm going to try and, and educate myself as well as being a footballer. Yeah, it's really important, but I think it's difficult for kids at that age to know now what I know because if I was if I was to speak to a 17, 18 year old Sam Bird I would, would have told him to get his head down a lot more come leaving third year so that's what I'm trying to do with my brothers so I have one sitting it today starting his leaving third and then I also have a, a younger brother 16 with UCD 17s actually and, and I'd, I'd try to tell him look UCD is probably the best club in the country to go get a decent leaving cert get in there on a scholarship and you'll play first team football as 17, 18, 19 and it's great it's so it, it, it's really important that although you don't want to put too much pressure on kids, that you, we inform them that it is really important because I know now it, it, it is, it's really, really important for after football or even during football. 
As you mentioned there, if you were to speak to a young Sam Verdon, you would have you would have told him to get his head down, and I'm sure your parents were and whatever. But is there enough people around football to be able, you know, to give you that advice and to say to you, listen, I did this, I did that, I should have done this, I should have done that, or is it a case of, of of trying to make choices on your own with your parents when you're not too sure on on where things are going? Yeah, it is difficult, but to be honest, Jamie, I think it's changing now. I think a, a lot more. There's a lot more people now in football that have degrees. The first one that I kind of would have learned from was Colin Bourne. He went and, when we were at Pats, he was doing um, teaching in Hibernia. Yeah. So that really opened my eyes to, oh, wait, football isn't everything you need to. You need to have something else, which, which you really do. And especially these days, there's a lot of people out there with degrees. So you need something. That's, that's kind of the basic requirement now to get a job is to have a degree. So you definitely need it. Now, June 29th, uh, the first game after the break, UCD against Longford, 7.45 in the UCD Bowl. Should be a, a clash towards the top of the table. You boys are being very civil here, sitting together, but once match night comes, you're playing in midfield against each other. You might have to kick each other. Is that something you're, you're, you're willing to do? Absolutely. You're looking forward to it, huh? I wouldn't kick him that way. <laughs> He's not knocking the goal past me. But it is. It's a strange league in that way that you know so many people yeah. and you've played with them or you've played against them and you're then going into a situation where you're like, I now need to, if I need to kick him or trip him up, he's going through on goal. You've got to do that. Yeah, I think it's that's the League of Ireland. Everyone knows everyone. I'm sure I've played with a lot of people. I've played against this season, even in the Premier Division, I've played with and played against people. So you get to form these relationships and yeah, you would kind of know everyone that you're playing against, but that's just, that's just the way it is. And uh, yeah, if there's a 50-50... Nobody's pulling out anyway. Great I think, stuff. I think Sam and I actually had a couple of training sessions together in home farm back in the day. Yeah, when we were kids, yeah. Small yeah, so, year yeah, older than him, so. Small world. Yeah. Small world is right. Listen, that's uh, fascinating stuff there from Sam Verdon from Longford and Greg Slogger from UCD. Boys, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, best luck for the rest of the season. I'm sure we'll catch up again. Thanks, Emil. Cheers, Jamie. Cheers, Jamie.